this time, I would like for us to turn, if you will, to Psalm 37, verses 1 through 8. This is the passage uh, that uh, we will be ministering God's Word from to you uh, this evening, verses 1 through 8, Psalm 37. The Scripture says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. The message this evening I've titled The Comfort of Divine Providence. As we are entering into a new year, 2014, it is our desire, I'm certain, that God may bring greater blessings to us in the coming year. And uh, it is my prayer uh, that uh, He will, as the Scripture says in Ephesians 1.3, that He will bless us as Scripture says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Yes, we desire this new year will bring uh, spiritual blessings to us. And uh, we know that God has promised uh, in Romans uh, 8.28. That, uh, that God uh, is, uh, that he, he will uh, do as, as he has promised. He has uh, promised that he will uh, do for his people who are the called according to uh, his purpose and those who love him. And so as we face the new year, uh, we have the many promises given to us In Scripture, whatever we face, that the Lord is going to be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But as we face 2014, I would have us this evening to reflect on this passage of Scripture and see uh, how it brings forth the comfort of God's providence. When we speak of the providence of God, uh, it is a word that um, we can relate to. Uh, As Reformed Christians, we believe in a sovereign God, and we know that uh, whatever the Lord does, He does according to uh, His will, and uh, for He is uh, King, and He reigns over all. But uh, when we come to this matter of understanding the the comfort of divine providence, we need to ask the question, what does uh, the providence of God mean? And the Heidelberg Catechism question uh, 27, the answer 
is a, is a very excellent answer as to what is the divine providence of God. You need to know what it is. As some people say today, well, uh, what would it look like? Uh, well, this is uh, the answer to that question. Uh, providence is the almighty, everywhere present power of God, whereby, as it were, by his hand, he upholds heaven and earth with all creatures and so governs them that herbs and grass, rain and drought, fruitful and barren years, meat and drink, health and sickness, riches and poverty, yea, all things come not by chance, but by his fatherly hand. Now what does it profit us or what does it comfort us to know that God created all things and that uh, he upholds all things by his divine providence. What comfort do we uh, receive from that? The answer, again, from the Heidelberg Catechism, question 28, says this, that we may be patient in adversity, thankful in prosperity, and for what is future, have good confidence in our faithful God and Father, that no creature shall separate us from his love, since all creatures are so in his hand that without his will, they cannot so much as move. Apart from God's will, his creatures cannot so much as, as move. In Psalm 37, I want us to note verses 1 and 2, how that the scriptures call us when we face ad adversity, especially from the unbeliever, from those uh, who are wicked, in verses 1 and 2, we are not to fret, not to worry. We are not to be envious at the wicked. We look at uh, those uh, who prosper in the world. And many of them are ungodly. But we should not envy them because of uh, their standing or for uh, their prosperity, their temporal comforts or anything such as that. Because we know that the end of the wicked is that they will face eternal ruin. So we are not to fret because we know that by God's divine providence, His watch care, His hand over us will be from the cradle to the grave. He will take care of us. He watches over us. He provides uh, for all of our needs. As we face the coming year, uh, we are facing a world that is very getting more and more hostile, it seems, uh, to Christianity. And so it may well be that uh, we may face uh, new types of challenges in, as a church and as Christians. Paul, writing to Timothy, says in 2 Timothy 3, 12 through 13, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So I believe that we are living in the days of what? The Apostle Paul is speaking of. When we speak of the last days, uh, some think of it as just that brief period of time before uh, the second coming of Christ. Um, the Apostle John says, uh, these are the last days. That is, since the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and his being seated at the right hand of God until uh, his coming again. And this is what Paul tells Timothy, men will be like. Now, keep in mind, the context here is this 
these first couple of verses, we're not to fret and worry. And we're not to uh, envy evildoers. But here's what we will be dealing with in the coming year as we have in years past. Men who are lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Matthew Henry said that this Psalm 37 is a, it's a teaching psalm. It gives us instructions as to how we may find comfort through the difficulties and perplexities of this life. When the godly behold the ways of the wicked and the prosperity that is in this world, there is the temptation in the flesh to be fretful, to worry, or to envy even the wicked. And we are instructed here from Scripture not to fret, not to worry because of evil doers. <clears throat> Neither be envious. There are some who look at the lot in life that the wicked have, and they may be tempted uh, to want to have their way of life, their lot in life. But let us remember, our comfort is in the providence of God, who from before the foundation of the world has meted out our lot to us. And uh, we should be content with whatever lot that he has given to us. The main thing is that we know his will and we're following his will. The thing that should avert any thinking about either worrying about the wicked and what they might uh, bring upon us in this land or those uh, who are blessed with many temporal things and tempted to envy them. Verse 2 tells us what we are to remember by way of the providence of God. Verse 2. By God's providence, and this is our comfort, we know that those that we would fret over or be envious of, that they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Several weeks ago, as I was mowing the lawn, there was a thistle that uh, grew up about a foot tall, and uh, it was a pretty stout plant loaded with all kinds of needles. And um, I wanted to make sure that that one came out by the roots. And uh, once I got it out by the roots, I set it on a, a rock so that the roots would dry out and that would be the end of that one, and we wouldn't see any more. I hope that it doesn't pop up again in the same place. I doubt that it will. Uh, but uh, that thistle is exactly what the Scripture is saying the wicked are like. They are like uh, the thistle in the world that God is going to pluck up. Of course, they're the planting of the devil. And uh, they are the ones oftentimes uh, who annoy and, and uh, cause worry to God's people. But they shall soon be cut down like grass 
and wither as the green herb. Job also, in speaking of the prosperity of the wicked and how we shouldn't envy them because they will soon be brought down, says in Job 21, verses 7 through 11, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, and mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring behold their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bowl gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth. But what will become of them? In a moment, Job says, they go down to the grave. And so, we are not to fret, neither are we to be envious of the workers of iniquity. The second thing that I'd have us to note, and that is in verse 3, as we look to find comfort in the divine providence of God, it is to be found in trusting in the Lord, trusting in His uh, providence. Trust in the Lord and do good. And we see here, promise that is given by God's providence it will be well with those who trust in him so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed and so God is the one who gives us uh, the place for us to live the land which we have and he is the one that brings Uh, the meals to us. I once heard it said by a dear pastor friend of mine, he says, if it wasn't for the divine providence of God, he said, God could keep the very spoon from reaching our mouth. And how true that is. God is in control of everything. He controls the very hair that falls uh, from our head. And so what we need to do is to put our trust in Him and do good. Now, when the righteous, we find in another psalm, are grieved because of wicked doers oppressing them, they're tempted to do evil, it says, but the Lord cuts them short of going that direction and takes care of their adversaries. We need more than ever to make it our purpose by the grace of God in us to trust in the Lord in the coming year. Oftentimes as I'm walking to my car in the parking lot, I'll look down and I'll see a penny. I used to just walk by and leave the penny there because it's just a penny. And then it struck me once when I looked on a penny what it says. It says, in God we trust. And then I thought, what business and what right have we uh, to step our foot on something that uh, has such a a biblical statement? In God we trust. I wish that it were more true in our country that we were a nation that truly did trust in the Lord. And there are many, many, uh, thank thank God, we have a lot of faithful Christians, but as a nation, oh, that we were a nation that trusted in God, find our problems would be greatly alleviated. So, as we face the world around us, as we Endeavor to live godly in this ungodly world. Remember, secondly, there's five things here. Trust in God 
and do good. And God, it says, by his providence, will give you the land and you shall be fed. We note in the fourth verse, we are to delight ourselves in the Lord. Uh, to delight in is to, to find in God that which causes us to have joy. Does knowing God is your God, that He is our covenant God, does that cause you to rejoice in your heart? Does it make you happy? It should, because we are to find our delights, not in the temporal things and blessings of this life, as we are so tempted to, to do, but we are to delight ourselves in the Creator God. And as we delight in Him by His comforting providence, He, it says in verse 4, will give you the desires of your heart. And so, as we face the new year, we have every reason to rejoice when we know that when our trust is in God, that uh, He is going to work out those things in our life that are difficult, things that we don't have answers for. To delight in the Lord is to find, as we said, joy and happiness in all that God is, in all the works He has done to rejoice in His attributes. We ought to uh, commit to memory His attributes. I know it's in the Westminster uh, Confession, those attributes. Uh, by the way, I, I absolutely love the Westminster Confession. It was my introduction to the Reformed faith. And uh, I know they have a very excellent uh, article in there regarding the attributes of God. And if, if you really want to delight in something, you've got to know more about it from the Scriptures. And, of course, uh, this, those biblical statements uh, in our confessions. Uh, it's just so delightful to see who our God is and His attributes, what He has done. Uh, we read in the Scriptures one of the verses of Scripture in the last year or so that has really gripped my heart is this, is that nothing shall be impossible with God. You know, we face uh, situations in life and we just don't seem to think we'll ever find the answer. But we know as we delight ourselves in the Lord that we will. We will find the answer because the Lord has said that if we call upon Him and we trust in Him, that uh, He will hear and He will answer, even as a father will answer a son. David delighted much in God and in His law. David says in Psalm 119, 92, unless thy law had been my delights, plural, I should have perished in mine affliction. Those who delight in the Lord shall have the desires of their heart. Isaiah 58, 14. As you read Isaiah 58, it's a chapter about Israel uh, being greatly uh, distressed in their spirit because they are seeking the Lord, they are fasting, they are doing all that they know to do to turn to the Lord. And yet they're falling short because their hearts are not right. It's all external. Their hearts aren't right with God. And the prophet Isaiah told them what they needed to do in Isaiah 58. And especially as it related to the Sabbath. Keep his Sabbath, you will note in Isaiah 58, 14, is the context in which these words are said. Keep it, then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord. It could be that a lot of the evil that has come upon this land 
is that not only is the Sabbath not kept, but there are many, even some professing Christian faith, uh, don't even understand how that it is to be kept holy as we are commanded in God's word. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, the fourth commandment. God says, when you do this, I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. That is, God will elevate that nation above other nations that are faithful in keeping uh, his Sabbath. And I will feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And so, dear Christian, we need to ask ourselves as we read this passage, surely we desire to know the comforts of God's divine providence. But we must, if we would know that comfort, we, we must delight ourselves in God. And then we note in verses 5 and 6 regarding God's uh, divine providence. We are to commit our way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. <clears throat> when I had first had an inkling that God was calling me into the ministry, I went to an elderly minister and wanted to know how I, how I would go about doing this. And he said, open your Bible to Psalm 37, verse 5. And he basically was saying, commit your way unto the Lord and trust in him and he will bring it to pass. Here I was just starting out, and I was thinking out how I was going to plan all this out and how that the Lord would lead in my entering into the ministry. And it was so far different. I could have never imagined because at that time I didn't even know what the Reformed faith was. And then I see how that the Lord has led in hindsight. This word commit it has a picturesque meaning. It means to roll the whole of life's burdens on the Lord. To roll it on the Lord. We are told in several places in Scripture, cast your burden upon the Lord. For He cares for you. And so, we are to roll these matters over upon the Lord and we will see the goodness and the comfort of God's providence unfolding in our life. But it requires a, a twin grace here and that is trusting God as we mentioned earlier. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us this very similar principle in Matthew 6, 25. He said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. That is, take no anxious thought uh, for your temporal life. What ye shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? And so the Lord uh, will provide 
for all of our temporal needs as we commit our way unto Him and as we trust in Him. And note in verse 6, it says, And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. In other words, all the evil men or those who are adversaries who would oppose us as, as Christians are going to be made to see that our God is on our side, that He is working on our behalf. It will be manifest to our adversaries that our righteousness is as the light. That is Jesus Christ who is the light of the world. And also the adversaries, though they make evil judgments against us, they will see the truth that the way that we are walking is the right way. A way that is according to uh, the will of God. And it will be opened up to them so clearly as the noonday that we are following good judgment. As it says, thy judgment will be revealed to them, the gainsayers, the adversaries of ours. It will be revealed to them as our righteousness, as light, but the judgment, our judgments will be as bright to them as the noonday. And then the fifth. commandment we have here is that we are to rest in the Lord. It's one of these commands that God gives. Uh, he couples it with uh, his promises. Rest in the Lord. The, the word rest actually means silent. Much like um, uh, say a father holding a babe in his arms. And you see that, that babe just, just completely uh, reposing in rest. So also we are to rest in the Lord and to wait patiently for Him. And now we come back to where we started at the beginning in verse 7. Worry not, fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in the way. As we started out, now we come back to that again in verse 7. Those who are prospering in this world uh, do not in any way be envious of them or covet the things that they have that we might have the same. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And then we are taught in how we are to then, uh, if we would have God's goodness bestowed upon us, we must conduct ourselves with proper behavior toward our, uh, our adversaries. Verse 8, cease from anger. You know, when our adversaries say insulting things, uh, when they do things that uh, stir up anger, we are to hold that anger back. We are to forsake wrath. The scripture says that the wrath of man uh, bides uh, in the fool. And uh, we are to hold back wrath. God is the one who is judge. And his wrath uh, will be poured out upon the ungodly in its time. We are taught to love our enemies, are we not, by our Lord Jesus Christ? We are not to envy them, nor are we to be angry with them. And we are not to give in to wrath. Again, the third time in this psalm we are told... If we know that comfort of God's providence and cast all of these matters of life into his hands in the coming year, 
We are to fret not in any way to do evil, in any wise to do evil. There are those that would like to bring down the testimony of a Christian by tempting them uh, or teasing them to do evil. But we as Christians are not to fall for the ploys of the adversary so that they could besmirch our testimony. Let us not be given to worry. When we think about 2014, we think about time moving along fairly quickly. (laughs) And it is uh, for some. It seems like it's faster than others. But uh, we we are to fret not. We are not to worry. And uh, there will be things that will come into our life that will cause us perhaps to be tempted to fret or to worry. But remember this psalm. It says three times here, fret not, worry not. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ uh, was was saying when he said, uh, take no thought for your life. We are to take thought, we are to make preparation, we are to uh, do our duty or our calling in this life, but we are to be anxious about it and fretful. This is a call to peace and repose in the providence of God. Leave all those matters that are out of our hands into the hands of God and commit them to God by prayer. And remember, as we close here, in verse 9, regarding the ones that are oftentimes envied, the evildoers of this world, remember this, to prevent you from fretting, that evildoers shall be cut off. That is, uh, they will be cut off in this world, in time, their life will be taken from them, which is but a short time, and cut off for all of eternity from God. Who would envy that kind of lot for all of eternity, to be cut off from God? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So let that be our comfort, beloved. God's providence is is with us in moving our life along, and we need to trust in Him. Matthew Henry said regarding fretfulness, since it was emphasized here in these verses, and envy, he says, are sins that are their own punishments. If you give in to them, it will create misery in your heart. They are the uneasiness of the spirit and the rottenness of the bones. It is therefore in kindness to ourselves that we are warned against fretfulness and envy. So congregation, uh, if we would find that sure way of comfort in the divine providence of God. Let us put these uh, verses of Scripture uh, into uh, practice. This is a call of God to action, and by the grace of God and His Spirit working in us, we are to uh, seek His face that more and more we would delight in Him, that we would trust in Him, that we wouldn't fret and uh, that we would commit our way to the Lord, that we would not become angry at the wicked and those who prosper in this world, but to wait patiently upon the Lord. That our joys in Christ may abound this coming year, I exhort each one of us to seek the grace of God, to live in that confidence in that repose 
of God's providence. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote to Titus, Titus 2, 11 through 14. He says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for, and this is our joy, ultimately, that joy of the blessed hope, which is the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. For those outside of Christ this evening, the call of the gospel is that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, repent of their sins, trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, that they will find the salvation of the Lord. May God be glorified in this coming year in thought, in word, in deed. Amen. Let us uh, close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we...